Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the vampire horror movie 30 Days of Night. I'll mostly be talking about the first film, but I do reference the second film, 30 Days of Night, Dark Days, a few times to know a little bit more about the vampires. The film takes place in the small secluded town of Barrow, which is the northernmost town in Alaska. The town experiences an entire month of darkness once a year. This is a real town, and from what I read online, sometimes it can actually last up to two months. But there's also times where the sun doesn't fully set for about six months, so it remains daylight 24 hours. So basically they have long periods of only night and only day. In the beginning of the movie, a mysterious man arrives with a ship in the background. He looks unhealthy and very disheveled. We see him alone and walking toward the town of Barrow, Alaska. He begins by sabotaging a bunch of different things in the town. First, the police find that all the satellite phones have been stolen and burned. How he knew where every single phone was is a mystery. All the sled dogs have been killed as well, so now there's no way to get out of town other than by airplane or helicopter. Because the snow is so deep in Alaska, regular vehicles can't go far outside the town. And because the town is so remote, it's hundreds or maybe thousands of miles until a major place of population. The darkness is beginning and a storm is coming, so the airport will be closed for a month and the last plane is already gone. There is one helicopter in town owned by a man who flies tourists and residents in and out, but the helicopter is found destroyed having a multitude of parts ripped out. So every single means of transport for people to leave has been taken care of by this man the vampires sent in. The man is eventually put in jail because they realize that he has quite literally appeared out of nowhere. No record of him flying in or coming in by any transport, and with all the strange things that have been happening, he's highly suspect. But the townspeople of course do not know about the ship. While he is in jail, the internet and phone lines mysteriously go down, and the strange man says things like, They are coming, and this time they will take me with them, for all that I have done. So it sounds like he is a familiar, or a servant of the vampires. He performs tasks for them in hopes that they will turn him into a vampire. The vampires seemingly know where everything was in the town like the satellite phones, the helicopter, and the sled dogs, so they must have sent someone in beforehand to scout the location out, even before this mysterious man arrived. Not long after the phone and internet goes down, the vampires begin killing people off. I would say this film leans more towards a biological vampire rather than a supernatural, as far as how the virus spreads and the abilities the vampires possess. With that being said, their appearance is more supernatural and creature-like than almost all vampires I've seen. Their dark eyes and razor-sharp teeth give them an extremely menacing look. This is one of the few vampire movies that actually treats them like a horror movie rather than an action adventure sometimes with horror elements added. The vampires appear so much stronger and faster than the humans that they stand no chance. And with all their communication and transportation cut off, the humans feel truly trapped and some of the situations they get into give me anxiety watching but I also couldn't look away. The head vampire tells the other vampires to remove the heads because he does not want them to turn. They are here to feed and hunt, not create more vampires. This possibly goes along with the other thing he said, which is that it took them centuries to make humans believe that vampires were only bad dreams. So at one time, vampires were probably accepted as being real, but because humans outnumber vampires, they were in danger. So they probably decided that it's actually safer for them to make people think they don't exist at all and are merely myth or legend. So because they want to keep themselves secret to humans, they might be very selective about who they turn, because they don't want a bunch of vampires they can't control running around killing people, possibly exposing their kind to the world again. The vampires have their own language that they speak. It's unknown if this language is learned or possibly passed on through genetic memory of the virus. It sounds like a very old language, so it could be a language the vampires developed a very long time ago. The vampires of 30 Days of Night have a monstrous appearance. Their skin is pale grey and their eyes turn black, as well as their eyes becoming slightly more pointed in some cases. These vampires don't grow the traditional two fangs. They grow a full set of razor sharp teeth like a shark or a piranha. They also grow long sharp nails resembling claws, able to easily cut people. Personally, I really like the appearance of these vampires. These vampires have super strength and speed. They are seen being able to move faster than a human could turn around. They are also seen being very agile, able to jump from rooftops and leap great distances. They are immortal and seem to stay the same age they were when they were turned. Lilith, the first vampire, is presumably thousands of years old but still looks young. They can also heal but their healing factor seems to be slower than traditional vampires. Different vampires could have varying healing abilities, 
we have seen two vampires be killed and brought back to life with some blood put in their mouth. One vampire was burned by the sun until death, buried for a considerable amount of time, and was still able to be revived by blood. But if they are dismembered or decapitated, it probably wouldn't work. So although these vampires have great resilience and can take a lot of damage, they are still seen being killed with regular guns and regular weapons. Also, while all the people in Alaska wear large coats and full winter gear, the vampires are seen wearing almost normal clothing. Because their bodies are dead or undead, they seemingly do not feel the cold. They seem to be able to call to each other from a distance with a high-pitched screech they can all perform. They seem to do this to alert others and also use it as a battle cry. Some vampire movies require the blood of a vampire to be ingested to become a vampire. But these vampires can turn people just by biting them. Although you can probably consume blood to be turned, as well as we see someone inject vampire blood to turn themselves. Turning into a vampire is shown to be painful, as the vampirism virus spreads through the body. When someone turns into a vampire, they seem to lose control of themselves and try to attack anyone close by, almost like a zombie. But when blood is injected, instead of being bitten, the person is able to control themselves for a lot longer before they lose control. The person who injects themselves with blood actually ends up dying not long after, so we never get to see if he would have indefinitely remained in control of himself. But presumably, he would still lose control of himself eventually. Some vampires are seen being able to hide amongst humans in the second film, so older vampires might be able to control themselves more around humans than a newly turned vampire. In the second movie, there's a vampire that says because his wound was only superficial, that he has been able to retain his humanity through the years. He also looks slightly more human. So because he received possibly less of the infected blood, his mental state is far less feral than other vampires. It seems that the circumstances in which you are turned can greatly determine how vampiric you become. These vampires are not harmed by crosses, holy water, garlic, or stakes. The only traditional vampire weaknesses they possessed are thirst for blood and sunlight. When a vampire is killed by exposure to sunlight, their skin turns to an ash and they die. Although there is still a body, they don't completely disintegrate like Blade or some other movies. Lilith is the first vampire and the queen of vampires. They all obey her orders and she makes all the final decisions about what the vampires do. She has many bodyguards and lives in a large ship, the same ship that traveled to Alaska in the first film. Even humans are seen serving Lilith in an attempt to be turned into a vampire. So the man from the first movie that we see sabotaging everything in town possibly could have been sent there by Lilith. Lilith did have a husband, but he was actually killed in the first film. He was actually the head vampire that was leading all the vampires in their attack against Barrow. Her home was the ship itself, and it seemed like that's where she stayed most of the time, as it was very safe and could be moved if they needed to leave. They keep humans hung from hooks attached to the ceiling, letting their blood drain into buckets underneath them. Definitely wouldn't be the most effective way to harvest blood, but it gets the message across, that's for sure. It also kind of reminds me of the game Dead by Daylight. Vampires are seen having some kind of treaty or ties with the police and FBI, and possibly some other government branches similar to Blade. This probably helps the vampires cover up a lot of killings and crimes that the vampires commit. Somehow, the vampires were able to cover up all the killings in the town of Barrow. The town was burned, so that probably got rid of a lot of evidence, and apparently, it was explained away by a faulty pipeline. Obviously the vampires had something to do with the cover-up of Barrow and what actually happened there. And in the second film, they actually want to return there again for another hunt. I wonder how many times they can kill everyone in a town before people stop moving there. Overall, I think 30 Days of Night is one of the best horror vampire movies. A lot of vampire movies make you think, wow, it'd be awesome to be a vampire. But in this movie, that's definitely not the case. Although I did say they lean more toward like a biological vampire, to be a vampire in these movies really does seem like a curse. You would kill anyone close to you. You're almost completely uncontrollable. There's not really many benefits to it. As well as you look pretty creepy, so good luck going out in public. If you guys haven't seen 30 Days a Night, I really recommend it. And I know for a fact that that movie is on Netflix, so if you have Netflix, you're good to go. I would recommend the second one a little bit less, but for you diehard vampire movie fans, you might still like it. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please drop a like. Subscribe if you haven't. I think the video for next Monday is going to be Lost Boys, so look forward to that. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.